What do you hear? What do you say? Welcome to Chicago, where the fires yeah. serve cold, but the wolves and the hawks never shiver in the snow. The bulls keep it running, the Sox run the south, the Cubs run the north, but the Bears run the house. True Chicago sports fans got their ears to the street. Any team make a move, and they never skip a beat. And in this house, this is where we be. Welcome to the show with E Rock and Big Z. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chicago. Coming from the True Chicago Sports Fan Cave, this is the TCSF Podcast with E-Rock and Big Z. Episode 131 is brought to you by 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Grit Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF Podcast t-shirts. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TRUEFAN15. For 15% off your entire order. That is true fan 15. Go and get your official TCSS shirts now. As always, I am Big Z and E Rock is off this week. So you get to hear my sultry voice today all alone. Uh, so what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. If you're a first timer or a long timer, please remember to hit that subscribe button, that notify button, and go ahead and give us a review on your favorite listening app. You can find us on Facebook at True Chicago Fans. You can follow us on Twitter at True Shy Fans and on IG at True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to go and support the show with a monthly subscription at anchor.fm slash True Chicago Sports Fans. Go over there and then click on the support button and you can subscribe for as little as 99 cents a month. Come on, guys. Doesn't cost that much. You spend more than that and a bunch of vices that you guys got. I know some of you could spend a lot on those vices. All right, so I know you guys like the show, and I know you guys are fans, but you got to tell your friends, and they'll tell their friends, and then we can all just be one big network of friends, just like Facebook. That's right, Instagram. So if you enjoy the content, or if we make you laugh, cry, yell, think, just please share all of this content with others who would like it just as well. All right, we got that out of the way. So it has been a non-stop busy week for me what a week so let's start off backwards right it's just you know i'm recording on a monday night so that means last night for the super bowl holy cow what a great game back and forth and in the end it was the pick that i chose so it hit so uh your boy told you uh what what to what to bet on and uh, hopefully you took that advice to take the chiefs because you got to bet with your uh, wallet and not your heart uh, you know, Philadelphia is a great love story that, you know, they had a kind of an easy road to get there. But uh, they were, you know, the darlings. Everyone's like, oh, wow, there's a good young team and so forth. But uh, let's see, the Phillies lost in the World Series. And then the Philadelphia Union for the MLS lost in the championship. And then the Eagles lost in the championship. So uh, Philadelphia, if you're good at uh, something that is losing and greasing your poles. <laughs> oh man so yeah it was, it was a great time so congratulations to kansas city chiefs i was able to meet up some great people at the same time while i was at my old watering hole uh i was able to meet michael blair the president and the uh of the nfl alumni chicago chapter along with simon chandler the treasurer of the nfl alumni cha- chapter of chicago along with former nfl player charlie brown and i even got to meet an original honey bear Put that into Google machine and you'll understand for the old heads uh, who are older than me will know exactly what I'm talking about. The Honey Bears were the uh, cheerleading squad for the Chicago Bears in the 70s and 80s. Uh, and I think uh, Super Bowl 20 was their last appearance, if I remember that correctly. So I got to meet uh, an original Honey Bear. Her name was Phyllis. She was such a sweetheart. She was running a raffle at the uh, watering hole over there that I was at. And um uh, she introduced me to a lot of people, so I really thank you. Thank you, Phyllis, for being so uh, gracious and, and very nice to uh, myself. And uh, w- hopefully we can have the alumni uh, come on to the podcast along with Phyllis. I would love to hear these stories about the Honey Bears. So, again, shout out to you guys. Thank you for everything and uh, we're making me feel a little special there. All right, so Super Bowl is over with. It is, you know, baseball season's around the corner. 
that means a warmer weather um you know it's sad to see football go but you know what that means spring is coming so uh, i'm excited for the warmer weather and it's been warm all week and you know for some reason this past saturday the 606 media family sean steven uh our friend tim and myself showed out at the knights of columbus annual bowling tournament and uh if my math is mathing correctly uh i think we took the illinois state champions out yeah yeah i think i I think we did that the scores are not finalized yet but we'll talk about that in a second so uh let's see uh i've been talking about my scores has been sucking for the past month month and a half i'm finally out of my route uh, of my rut uh i'm able to not think at at the approach and uh I've, i've been turning it around so oh man uh, so I bowled that. We bowled that as a team. We took them out. I'll talk about my scores in a second. Uh, so we lost three games, and then uh, I entered into the doubles. And I thought they were just going to take my the, uh, our scores of the two people, myself and Tim, who entered into the doubles, and take our scores, and then you know would be competing those uh, competing those scores against other other teams that that, that signed up for doubles. Uh, but no, that was not the case. We had to bowl an extra three games each. Uh, so, uh, you know, I did okay with those. I bowled my average on those, but, uh, you know, from 140 to 150, that's usually my average now. Um, but, uh, your boy showed out, man. Your boy showed out for, uh, going against the champs. I bowled a 141 just to warm up. We literally had three, five minutes to warm up for the entire team. That's not enough time. It, that, that, that was kind of one of the problems that for a lot of us, uh, we didn't, uh, bowl for well the first game. But a 141, respectable. A 193. So I, I missed, uh, I think I left a one open frame, maybe two. Uh, a, one, a 162. So that, that's all scratch, which means straight up pins. Uh, and they have to add my handicap of 63 pins. So uh, your boy showed up. And uh, hopefully uh, 606 uh, Media Family, the bowling team, uh, will be going down state to Peoria, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Yep, knock on wood, and uh, we'll be going out there. And I don't know yet what the final is for the for the doubles, but uh, if that's the case, then I'm gonna have a long day of bowling down in Peoria, uh, along with uh, Tim and Sean and Steve. Uh, so, uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully we see you guys down in Peoria. Maybe we we'll some some shoot some uh, some vin- some videos out there. All right, lastly, your boy had jury duty downtown. That's right, I was over at the Daily Center for jury duty. I uh, went over there on Tuesday, and I'm um, like, fingers crossed, don't get picked, don't get picked, don't get picked. Uh, two teachers, a counselor, and some other type of people, I can't remember everybody because there's 12 of us, ended up getting picked. And it was kind of a blessing in the skies because it gave me a break from being at work. Um, I really don't mind downtown. Um, I did drive there. I usually do take the train, but um, the weather wasn't so great, so I didn't want to be stuck in that weather. Um, so, But yeah, it just literally was uh, on the 21st floor. You know, went through the court proceedings. I don't even want to talk about the case. It was, it was a boring case. Um, but just hanging out around downtown with the great views. Um, and then found out that you can go to the Daily Center. And there's a library all the way at the top. I think in the 25th floor or whatever it is. And you can you literally just go up to the library and just look at old books. And just if you can read law books or whatever. But the view from there is phenomenal. You can see the lake. You can see everything. 25 floors up. I mean, can't beat that. So And it's free. No, So... Don't tell anybody I told you. Oh, and don't tell Lori. Um, <laughs> so it was great. It was great. It was able to change the pace. Um, and I didn't have to, you know, work with the kids for a week. So it was a nice little vacation. And uh, today was the first day back. And uh, it was a hell of a day. Like, hell of a day. The kids said they missed me. But then uh, when it came to being in class, they just they just cannot just uh, listen. <laughs> Uh, I, I, just, I don't know what to tell you They just can't listen Alright so enough about my busy week In this episode It is going to be a loop episode We're going to talk about our Chicago sports teams um, I'm going to sp- be specific And talk about the, uh, the Chicago Bulls And their failure to make moves At the deadline And a certain rumor about a certain player Being bought out And possibly signing with the Bulls Ooh it can get interesting. All that plus Stirry the Pot and what you looking at. 
Hey guys, it's Steven. And this is Sean, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to listen to No War on the Weekend. New episodes on Monday. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, so we're going to go do a couple of shots. So let's kick it back over to Big Z and E Rock. No War on the Weekend. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for the little promo there. I love that promo. Uh, yeah, so welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with uh, E Rock and Big Z. E Rock is out this week. Um, I am not going to do the funny stories, the Big Z, Big Three with Big Z this week, just because uh, I want to get into this Bulls situation in the loop. So uh, this is the loop, our Chicago Sports Roundup, where we keep you in the loop. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome, welcome to Chicago. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Oh my goodness. So I am actually recording this. It's pretty late at night. I am um I, I stayed up to watch a Bulls game. And I wanted to be accurate in what my comments were going to be about the Chicago Bulls, who now sit at 26 and 31 with 24 games left, including you know, this is including the Orlando game. I mean, the trade li- the trade deadline came and went, and, and the Bulls made no moves. AK and uh, Ever- Eversley, the uh, Acme uh, regime, didn't make any moves. They're the only team in the NBA who didn't make a move or a trade or anything. They didn't pick up anybody. So you have the team that you started with at the beginning of the season. Uh, so w- what happened to these guys making the big splashes? Who are going to go all out? Where is that? Are we still stuck in that guard packs mode? It is is do we have upper management? And what I mean by that, ownership telling you guys not to spend money because right now you guys are a a mirror image of the White Sox, getting players that you'll sign and they're hurt and they can't contribute, and the guys that you did sign for large money are not contributing. It, it, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure Leary Garcia can play point guard or shooting guard right now for the Bulls at this point. I think you're going to have to swap players. Maybe Tim Anderson can come in there and shoot some hoops. I don't know. I really don't know what's going on with the Bulls and the White Sox. And I'm going to leave, I'm going to put the White Sox in the drawer for a little bit. But the Chicago Bulls right now, I, I, I have no idea why there isn't any urgency at all when they play the game. They'll have one, maybe two good games in a row where they're moving the ball and Vooch is getting 25 points and 10 rebounds. And everyone else is getting 15, 17. And the ball is moving around and the points are spread out. The bench is actually scoring and involved. And then they'll go on a four-game losing streak because Zach's got to get his 25 and miss 500 threes. And uh, DeMar is put in a situation where he has to shoot a three. We know he's not, he's a, not a good three-point shooter. I, I, I just don't get it. I I just don't get it. Is it the coaching? Is it the, the front office? Is it the ownership? W- what is going on up there? Now, there is rumors. Yes, there is rumors. And this is according to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski that the Bulls are the front runners to land Russell Westbrook. And that is only if he hits the buyout market but he's expected to. He's expected to be bought out from Utah. And I know there's a lot of fans, NBA fans, that do not like Russ. But you got to look at his, all of his work. Look at look look at it, his full body of work. This man is a triple double machine when needed to be. He's a scoring machine when needed to be. Is he the best shooter? No. No way, no way. But he is a ball-dominant guard that can distribute the ball. And he's a great rebounder for a guard. Hmm. We kind of struggle rebounding. Besides Vooch and and Drummond, you don't see anybody else rebounding. So I I personally, personally would like this. But, uh, 
there's someone else who would like this. And it's Bulls color commentator Stacy King. So let's listen to his hot take on the whole Westbrook being added. Why do you think uh, Westbrook could help the Bulls, Stacy? Tremendously with effort and energy every night. Okay. One thing you can't say about Russell Westbrook is he doesn't play hard. You know, this is a superstar player. You can say he can't shoot. You can say, oh, he's, he's a terrible shooter. Da, da, da. Okay. I'll give you that. He may not be the best shooter, but I would take him on my team any night because this is one guy you don't ever have to worry about coming ready to play. You don't have this guy loves to compete. He loves to play. He's going to he's going to he's going to inspire other people to play hard because when you see a guy his superstar this is a hall of famer. No okay? question. This, yeah. this is not some fringe player. This is not some guy past his prime. This guy a few seasons ago before he went to the Lakers was a triple double machine. He goes to the Lakers and everybody wants to put him as the scapegoat. Well, he's the reason why Los Angeles, you know, was bad. It's all Russell Westbrook's fault. Come on, man. I'm not even trying to hear all that. First yeah. of all, LeBron James doesn't want to take any kind of criticism whatsoever. The GM LeBron James should be fired because the GM LeBron James was one who set these teams up. He brought all his friends on the roster. He recruited guys to come play with them. And then when they got there, it didn't work out. And he didn't take any responsibility for that. Okay. Russell Westbrook, you, you recruited him. You knew what kind of player Russ is. The coaching staff knew what kind of player. The organization knew what kind of player he is. He's a ball-dominant guard. He's a guy that has to have the ball in his hands. He wants to get the ball, rebound the ball at the point guard position, and push in transition. He will pass. That's the reason why he gets triple doubles. But you better run with them. LeBron doesn't want to run in transition. LeBron wants to walk the ball up, shoot a step back 30-foot three. That's what he wants to do. Uh, the coaching staff should be the blame, you know, for for not knowing how to put Russell in situations where he could succeed. You're telling Russell now, okay, we want you to be as uh, sit in the corner, and stand there, and shoot threes. That's not his game. Yeah, Stacy, thank you, thank you. Kind of validating my points there. Thank you, Stacy. It's a great insight by Stacy on this. Uh, uh, give me the hot sauce podcast. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a decent podcast. Not gonna lie. All right, so I'm gonna point this out to our boy. Mike Logic You have to blame GM LeBron James He told all his boys Let's come over here I want to make this super team It didn't work out so well Did not work out so well Right Stacy said they're not using Russ correctly I agree He's averaging right now 16 7 and 6 or six and seven, yeah. Regardless, it's, it's one point, uh, one rebound difference, right? But here are my concerns with if the Bulls were to bring him in. He's a ball dominant guard. We already have two other ball dominant players on the team. I know Vooch isn't ball dominant, but he needs the ball more. He plays with his back against the, the rim, and he also has that push shot. He also has a hook, and he can also stretch the floor with a three. He's an all-around modern-day center, which is what you needed. Can he put the ball on the floor? Not really, but that's not his, really his, his job. That's not what we need him for. Can he mesh with the team as it is constructed right now? Right? He does pass the ball. His history has proven that. Triple-double shows you that he can make the assist. He can get everyone else involved. But just like Stacy said, He's in a running gun. You've got to push the ball. You've got to run with him. We have a young team that can run. Ayo and Kobe are great runners. They can spread the floor because they'll get on the wings. They can shoot, right? Especially right now, Kobe's doing a great job. He's having a rebound season. It is a contract year, but, you know, it, it is a bounce back season. He's playing way better defense and he's shooting better. But again, we have two other ball dominant players in DeMar and Zach. And they're just taking turns. There's really no rhythm to this offense. Zach, there's been reports that Zach and Billy Donovan are pretty much on the outs. Because everyone is, the whole team is is with the coach and saying, we want to share the ball, move the ball. But Zach wants to play ISO. That's all he wants to do is play ISO. He wants to get his numbers and, and not worry about anybody else. Is that true? I, I mean, you guys w- can argue this point with me, but I, I see it. I see it a lot. You know, you'll see Zach just dribble, 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 and everyone's just going to stand there. And either he's taking a bad shot or he's, he's a turnover machine. 
can Zach change his game and go back to sharing the ball a little bit more and finally do what he's good at, which is his when he's set and he shoots, he's a great shooter. You know, set a pick for him. Let him drive to the hole. He's explosive. His knee is fully healed. Use that to your advantage. All right? that, that That's what we want from Zach. He still can get 18 points easily. Now we have three, possibly four superstars. If you share the ball. If you share the ball, move the ball. The ball moves faster than any defender. I'm coaching that right now. And, you know, I, I get it. It's hard for my kids to get that through their head. But these guys are professionals. They know that. They know that. Slash to the hole. He'll find you. All right. Lonzo. The whole Lonzo saga. He is not coming back. We don't have a point guard. We don't even know if he's going to come back next year. Typical White Sox Bulls signing. I, just being it honest. Just keeping it real. That's Manny Grandal. Same thing. Highest White Sox contract ever. Has not produced. Bad defensively. Doesn't play that often. Was hitting under 200 for most of the time here. Useless. Useless. Just throwing money away. All right. Lonzo Ball is not coming back. Was he a good point guard? Yes. His shooting was better at that point. But did the Bulls jump the gun too early? In that signing on damaged goods. Because right now, that's what it looks like. Looks like New Orleans was like, here you go. You can have the bag. And it's got a hole at the bottom. Lonzo's not coming back this season. You've got, what, 24 games left? You got an all-star break. I think we got two more games before the all-star break. And then 24 games. So 22 games after the all-star game. All-star break. It's not feasible. It takes a while to ramp up into NBA conditioning. You can do all the workouts he's, he's, he wants, but until you're running up and down, and even then he's going to be on a, a minute restriction. So how much can he contribute this year? The Bulls right now are out of the playoff picture. They're not even a play-in. They're out of the playoff picture. They're not in it. So would Russell give you a shot in the arm and get you to push forward? To maybe get, get to the eight seed, even the seven seed. I, I think it would be worth the shot. Why not? Why not? Dalen Terry. We, we picked up Billy Donovan because he's, he's great with young players and he, what he did in, in uh, OKC. I don't see any development from Dalen Terry. That, that, that's another kid. Him and Io have developed themselves by the roles they've been given on the Bulls. And the Windy City Bulls. I mean, Dalen Dalen Terry's been going up, up and down between both of those teams more than an elevator. Back and forth, back and forth. And finally, tonight, finally, the kid got nine minutes. And he showed out. Yes, I think he only had four points. Uh, four points and a rebound. In nine minutes. But he was playing great defense. Great defense. And he went to the hole and he, he took a... a a foul, uh, I think it was like two, three minutes in that he, he played. He took a shot to the chest, bounced right back up, and all the veterans came over and slapped him in the head. It's like, great job, kid. Way to take that hit. Keep playing hard. He really gave them an energy to try to come back. Russell Westbrook would give you that because he's, he's a hard-nosed old-school player that he's going to play hard every single game. So... This is the part where you're going to agree or disagree with me. Hit me up. Hit me up. I'm down to, to, to debate this. I just think it would be a great move, a shot in the arm. And then look how many all-stars you, you have on your team. Make a run. Make a push. And if it doesn't work out, you have trade chips in the offseason. Trade Zach. I mean, they, they didn't get, they got low-balled this trade, this trade uh, 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 deadline. That's why they couldn't trade Zach, because they were lowballing him, the Bulls. They lowballed the Bulls. Everyone and their mama knows that they were trying to get rid of players. They can't resign Vooch yet. They haven't been able to. They were getting lowballed. Kobe White, same thing. Zach, you just paid him the max contract. So it's hard to match up salaries and move that type of player around. So you're going to get up 
bad contracts on the way back. And that's not what you, you need right now. We have enough of that. We've got to move forward and stay, staying stuck in the middle is something that a lot of the Chicago teams have been doing for years and years and years. And I know the Bulls lead the league in attendance. If this team stops producing playoff pushes that they can compete and not just show up, you've got to stop going to the game, stop supporting. That's the only way they're going to make changes. That's the only way they're going to make changes. You've seen what the baseball fans did. When the Cubs started sucking, the Cubs fans stopped going. White Sox fans are notorious for that. If you put a bad product on the field, we're not going. Not going at all. So, at the end of the day, we want the Bulls to be great. We want all of our Chicago teams to be great. I just hate being stuck in the middle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Stirring the Pot after a word from our sponsors. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Hey, this is comedian Ken Gar, and I was just a guest on the True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast with E-Rock. Big Earl E-Rock. and G-Money and a bunch of weirdos. So tune in! <laughs> this is Enrique Calderon coming to you from True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast. Come check me out on social media, Enrique Calderon Official, on Instagram and Facebook. Check it us out. Y te lo dice. Enrique Calderon. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with E-Rock and Big Z. All right, guys. It's that time again. You know what time it is. It's time for Stirring the Pot. All right. So we just had the Super Bowl, so I had to, I had to get on this topic. And uh, what I did is I went and did some research. And I am going to talk about 11 foods that don't belong anywhere near a Super Bowl party. So I know a lot of you listening had your own Super Bowl party. Some of y'all went to you know local watering hole, the bars, whatever. But we're talking specifically to those who had a party. So I'm going to talk about these 11 things that should never, ever, 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 ever be near a Super Bowl party. Number one, kale chips. Disgusting. Why would you do that? And some people love kale chips, but that's not a Super Bowl party food. No, no. Keep that at the grocery store. Number two, lettuce that isn't in a dip or in a burger. First of all, I don't even know where, what what kind of lettuce, dip you put lettuce in. I don't. I don't want to know, and I want it nowhere near me. The only time I eat, the only time I eat lettuce is a lettuce wrap, or if it's on a burger. That, that's that's the only way. So, um, or salad, you know. Um, this third one, maybe I'm pronouncing this wrong because that's what I do on the show. Uh, canapes, canapes. I, if you don't know what it is, it's a fa- one of those little fancy uh, food things. Essentially, it's it smoked salmon on toast with some cheese. No, <laughs> that's a no. Don't don't want it. Don't want it near me. Number four, this is on the list. I've never had this product. It's called uh, Skinny Vodka, Skinny Girl Vodka, or Mojito, or Margarita, or Cosmo. It's like one of those prepared bottle drinks. Uh, I've never had any of these. Um, that's not my taste, and uh, you know, I don't think our demographic either. So, uh, yeah, I don't think we'll be drinking that anytime soon. Maybe uh, if it were your significant other, maybe, but you know, no, no, that's a no. Uh, number five, a fancy cheese plate. I'm good, dog. I'm good. 
Mm-mm, no. No. You know, keep your charcuterie, charcuterie uh, plate uh, for some uh, other occasion. That is not for a Super Bowl party. All right. Super Bowl parties. We know what we eat and we'll get into that in a second. Number six. This is the only one I do not, so far. I do not agree with non-alcoholic beer. Um, you, I have friends that no longer partake in al- an alcohol drink for whatever reasons. So if they were to bring their own and drink this. I have no issue with it. Um, I, I'm willing to support my people who are going through that struggle and still want the taste of beer, but not drinking. So that one, that that one, I'm okay with as long as that's not the only thing that's uh, that's beer related that we can uh, have. Uh, number seven: cocktails with more than two ingredients. I'm a Jack and Coke man, or if, or if I'm having some bourbon. Or or some scotch Very simple Very simple But you know For the Super Bowl We don't need those Fufu drinks We don't need the uh, The umbrellas And the uh, You know The flaming What the flaming mo Alright we don't need none of that Number 8 Fake meat Oh boy Yeah don't Don't bring no cauliflower Pizza No cauliflower Buffalo wings Cause those are not Buffalo wings it's just cauliflower in buffalo sauce. Keep that keep that away. I know some people might be vegetarian, but sorry. Sorry. Nope. That's a no. Number nine. Adorable uh, cupcakes. This isn't Easter. This isn't a kid's party. Uh, it's not a birthday party. We don't need none of that. We don't need none of that. Adorable cupcakes. Who the hell? Who is bringing this shit? <laughs> it has a caption under this picture of these uh, adorable cupcakes that look like you know pigs or ladybugs or flowers or whatever. Underneath it says cupcakes th- decorated with footballs are passable but not encouraged. Mm. Mm. That's for debate. Debate. Number ten, quinoa. Yeah, no, that's a no. Keep it moving. And number eleven, mimosas. Again, you know I, I, I'm very simple. And I know E's very simple when it comes to drinking. Um, I, I'm not sure how E feels about mimosas. I guess we could find ask him next week and see how he feels about having a mimosas. Does he have his pinky up and uh, salted rim? <laughs> All right. So yeah, the mimosas. That is no. That, you know, that's for the girls' night out. Uh, they go drink the mimosas. Or, or I'm sorry for for brunch. That that's that kind of vibe. Vibe. No, it's not for Super Bowl. All right. So I want to hear about your worst experience as a, at a Super Bowl party. What kind of food did they have? What was the worst food they had? Because we could always debate about, oh, we had the best, uh, you know, spread and this, this, and that. We had the chicken dip and we had the we had the smoker going. I, I we I, We've discussed all that. I want to know about all the bad ones. We're like, what did they put out there? You know, did they put like dates and, and uh, whatever, bacon dates and whatever? No. Just tell me what the, what type... What is the worst thing they put out there as a spread? Hit me up. Y'all got my info. Uh, and you always can help hit us up at True Chicago Sports Fan uh, at gmail.com. So before we go, what are you looking at? What are you watching that isn't sports? Man, for me, it's been busy with coaching now, bowling, uh, and uh, doing the podcast. It's, it's really, really hard to get to watch stuff. Um, but I did watch, uh, I'm on the new season of Mayor Kingstown, uh, with Jeremy Renner. That is a phenomenal show. Another Taylor Sheridan production. This man is just turning out shows left and right. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely something that, that, um, I am hooked. I think they're on season two episode, episode five. Oh, um, I think it's called shrinking, uh, with. Uh, Jason Statham No Here it goes It is uh, Shrinking with Jason Siegel Harrison Ford Christi, Christi, Krista Miller uh, Jessica Williams Luke Tennis uh, Luke Tenney Sorry uh, And that's pretty much it As far as big names It is on Apple TV It is pretty funny um, It takes place with uh, 
Jason Siegel being a therapist along with Harrison Ford. Jason uh, loses his wife and uh, he's trying to find his way back uh, after lo- losing his wife. Uh, and Harrison Ford is his boss and, and is very patient with him. Uh, no pun intended. And how he's, he's going through the process. Uh, and then Jason has lost his relationship with his daughter for whatever reason. So you've got to watch it. There are about uh, four or five episodes as well on uh, Apple TV. And that is a weekly thing. So they don't just dump, all out, dump them all out there for you. So definitely double, double uh, definitely check that one out. It is uh, highly recommended. I, I enjoy that one. Um, and also Mayor of Kingstown. It is nonstop action uh, drama. It's great. It is a great, great, great show. All right, y'all. That is it for today. Nice and short and sweet. Um, no arguing today. No partner. So uh, I just wanted to talk about how I felt about the Bulls. But uh, thank you for listening. A big thank you to our sponsor, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Great Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to greatclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TrueFan15 for 15% off your entire order. That is TrueFan15. Get your shirts now. Check out the rest of the 606 Media lineup. The newest show in the 606 family is the No Water on the Weekend with Steven and Sean. It is a pop culture forward podcast that dabbles in funny trivia, film, television, music, and Chicago centric news and happenings. New episodes available every single Monday. 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Shy Native Entertainment present the All Net Podcast. Make sure, make, make sure to check out the All Net Podcast with Mike Logic and Ideal after all the Bulls games. Make sure to check out the All Net Podcast with Mike Logic and Ideal. Speaking of Mike Logic and Ideal, the Shy Native Radio podcast is also available on all major platforms. Mike Logic, Ideal, and Throw MC talk about sports, movies, and all types of ill shit. Go and check them out now. Shout out to Ronesh, Panic, Serious Beats, and Custom Made for the beats that we played on today's show. Check out PanicOnTheBeat.com for your moment, merch, and gear. Check out, check us out on social media. You can find us at True Shy Fans on Twitter and on TikTok. Find us on Facebook, IG, Spotify, and reach out to us on our email. We want to hear from you. Give me those recommendations about those bad plates, the bad spreads for Super Bowl. Um, reach us at True Chicago Sports Fans at gmail.com. All right, y'all. For E Rock, this is Big Z. We'll see you next time for episode 132. And until then, Be good to each other for the love of sports. I always like to keep my favorite snack handy. Need a little excitement? Step into a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. A few moments later. You have a lot of incest. That's real. Shut your mouth. Lover boy. Nature versus nurture, Lodge. Nature always wins. I think he's on steroids. Hasta luego, amigos. Show's over, show's over, show's over.